so there's so many people here that one sees, um, you know, faces from previous sessions. Our critical dialogue series is really our attempt um, to get the conversation going on things that are relevant for our, for our communities. I know you know, but just to remind you, Cornerstone is really about social justice because of its history uh, from 1970 onwards on the Cape Flats, um, but also its deep commitment over time. Um, and still, that sort of the scholarship that we try and work with, um, the type of questions we try and engage and, and, and so forth, and how we prepare young people and other people, you know, all our students for the world, is to change the world. So I think it's from here, learn to change the world. And for us, that's not simply a statement. We really, really mean it. And so Critical Dialogue Series forms part of that. Um, so thank you for being here. And, and so every month, um, I think the first Thursday of the month, uh, we will do something like this. Um, so thank you for being here. So just to say briefly, we get that um, our history is not past. And our past is present. We all know this. I was born in 1974. Two years before this story played out. And for me to be part of conversations with you um, and with other activists, with other young people who were not at that time there and present is a major and significant thing. And so the, the notion of having the, the missed and the missing stories voiced is a major thing. So thank you very much. And thank you very much to the center with UCP. So Gertrude, we know you and we love you and we appreciate you. Over to you. Thank you. Good evening, friends, colleagues, and I'm especially happy that um, we have so many young people in our presence because one of the key things uh, I went to one of the dialogues at uh, the at the Cornerstone Institute last year. Now, some of you may know I'm at, I'm at the Center for African Studies, and this is what I also do. However, I thought instead of having it up there on the hill, which may be a little bit inaccessible, why don't I partner with other people? It means we have this uh, relationship, but also with Artscape. Thank you very, very much for, to Artscape. Um, the aim of this meeting is, apart from you know, showcasing a piece of memorabilia that is very, very important, and we're going to chat more about that, one of the key things that I, I want to engage and want to encourage to engagement is those were the challenges in 1976. And to what extent have those very challenges been overcome? However, oh, I also want to say apology from um, Kirshan Panchim from UCT. He's had an accident and therefore he's not, he's not able to come here, unfortunately. He sends apologies. So apart from what has happened in 1976, what are the issues today for young people? 1976 left an unmistakable mark on South Africa's history and future. In Cape Town, it was the year that students organized the largest march to the city center and the year that students at Salt River High added their voice to the growing chorus condemning the abhorrent apartheid regime. Uh, what are the rights and what are the responsibilities? But we also know that without um, having a dialogue that is intergenerational, it's not going to get us anywhere. I think it's very important that we ensure <coughs> that it's intergenerational but also intersectional. And I think we must try and broaden our group at some stage to have maybe people who are more marginalized in terms of LGBTIQ or disabled or other um, axes of oppression. But without further ado, I think this evening is for the film and for your dialogue. So I will just say thank you very much for coming. And unfortunately, I, you know, as some of you know, you know, tonight I have a red beret, but I have so many different hats. So at 6.30, I'll be leaving because at the Baxter, I've coordinated a group of refugees for the film for the play there, so that I have to be at the Baxter. But they know we'll be coming at 6.30. He's, at the moment, he's at the matric <coughs> teacher, teacher, yeah. teacher meeting. So we ensure one of us is here. But thank you very, very much. So we can give them a hand as I ask you now to come forward and just welcome you. Thank you. Yeah. So because, um, oops. So because, no, but the spotlight on me is not working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually the spotlight on me is. <laughs> so I decided to take the ramp because I couldn't come out of the wind. Now I will be very short and sweet. I just want to welcome all of you to Artscape. It is an absolute privilege to have an event like this in 
Ice Rudin, I was just talking earlier uh, 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 about the, you know, the history of this place, and he was asking me about the MPF on Lake Lowe's um, little saying in the wall there. And why it is so important for Artscape to have events like this is that we all know the history of Artscape in Nicolai in 1970, whatever, before I was born. I mean, I don't know anything about the documentary. I'm in, I'm a, what do you call it, a, 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 a newbie or whatever. A born free. Born free. I mean, the Botox work, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it's part of Artscape's transformation. It's part of, of Artscape opening up our venues to events like this, which couldn't be held even just a few years ago. And welcome everybody. We hope that this collaboration would grow from strength to strength to strength. Um, just an apologies. Um, sorry, I'm Simone Yerogi, the communications manager. And apologies for Marlon Maru, our CEO. She's had to go and accept um, an award or something at the board here of one of Artscape co-productions. So enjoy the production and see you at Artscape um, as often as what you would like to be at. Thank you very much. Okay, if we hand over to you now. Yeah. <laughs> Anwar. So, Anwar, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Anwar Omar. Uh, I'm the producer and director of the documentary that you're about to see. Firstly, I need to thank Gertrude and the UCT, and Cornerstone, as well as Artscape. Thank you very much for showcasing this, I think, important um, piece of history. Um, by way of introduction, the, the documentary is essentially about 10 students, two teachers, and a parent that was arrested in 1976 at Salt River High School. The events leading up to the arrest and the incarceration, the court case, and obviously the impact on their lives. Um, I, I was the youngest of, of the group that was detained. I was 14 years old at the time. Um, however, I, you know, in making the documentary, I didn't want the documentary to be about myself. Neither did I want the documentary to be about any one individual in the group. It's obviously about an event at the time, but I wanted to be broader than that. I wanted it to represent all those untold stories because there's many thousands of, of individuals, students and others that were arrested at the time whose stories will probably never be told. I had, you know, difficulty in putting both financially and otherwise in putting this documentary together it took me three years and, and almost 200,000 rand which I obviously had to fund myself um, so yeah the, the, the story is called Salt River High 1976 the untold story um, with the intention that this story um, represents all those other untold stories yeah so it's, you'll see, you know, uh, even though I'm telling the story, I don't feature much in, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the documentary. Um, and even though everyone else participates in, in the documentary, uh, the story is about none of them either. Yeah. Um, and so, so, yeah, I, I, I would like to get feedback in that regard uh, as we go along. Um, some of the challenges that I encountered uh, in making the documentary, I mean, Cornerstone is partially a film school as well, um, is, you know, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a filmmaker. Uh, I'm a petroleum economist by qualification and profession. Um, I retired three years ago, which put me in a position to, to do the, the documentary. So I had to up my skill set pretty quickly. Um, I had obviously good project management experience. I managed mega projects all over the world over the past 20 years. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, project management came naturally to me, but I didn't have the technical expertise of filmmaking. So, you know, firstly, I had to uh, upskill myself and I had to insource um, the expertise that I, that, I, that I required. Having said that, it's expensive. Um, I, knew, I knew I had a story, um, a good story, because, you know, I've, I've, I've told many about it and, you know, many told me that it's a story worthy of, 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 of narrating, but funding was, was never forthcoming. So, you know, I funded it myself, um, you know, using my uh, retirement funds um, yeah, to, to fund it. The scope of the documentary, you know, I, I, I was very meticulous in terms of scoping it. It's about these 10 students, two teachers and a, and a parent that were arrested at Salt River. In 1976, obviously, many thousands of individuals were involved. So how do I scope it? How do I ensure that you don't have a never-ending story in terms of scope creep? So I, I kept it you know, about these individuals um, and tried to use 
their experience to reflect broader on our society. So that's the scope. So you know, it's, it's, it's no more or less than 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 that. When you know why I've had many questions why certain individuals or certain events weren't included in it simply because it's not part of the scope of this documentary. Yeah, um, footage. Um, I just had a discussion with the uh, individual at the back there. Um, you know, uh, uh, there isn't video footage about you know that period. Um, there probably is. I wasn't able to find it. Uh, TV came out in 1975. This was 1976. So you probably have police footage, but you know that's probably also been destroyed. I, I tried to find it. So there's very little footage about it. I, I you know, I looked at um, many other uh, documentaries, you know, utilizing animation and, and so forth. Um, you know, it didn't work for me. I, I, I had to make do with what I had. Um, and it is what it is, yeah. So I, you know, the the uh, Imam and I uh, documentary uses um, uh, uh, animation quite effectively. I tried it, but I didn't feel comfortable about it because it, it detracted from the authenticity of the of the uh, uh, documentary. I almost had to recreate uh, a footage. You see, there's footage, you know, where we get together, footage in the cell where we were incarcerated. The breakthrough came, in fact when I got approval to shoot, um, you know, part of the, the footage in the cell where we were incarcerated 40 years earlier, as well as getting together 40 years after, you know, uh, uh, September the 2nd, um, we, you know, we came together for the first time ever. <laughs> you know, we've lost contact and then we managed to get together. So I almost recreated, um, you know, some, some footage as well. And then the, 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 the composition putting this whole story together without me standing up and telling the story you know coming through in terms of the narration of others um you know the content and 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 then also the narrative how how to weave all these bits and pieces of information together into a story that's meaningful and and and, and that you could relate to but that also solicit emotions yeah um and um you know i i i i retired three years ago and went on a bike trip um, you know, covered, you know, half the planet on, on a motorcycle. And you might think, why is this relevant? Um, it was relevant for me because I had some quiet time in my helmet where I could, you know, think about, you know, how to piece this together. And you'll, you'll probably appreciate when, once you see it, um, you know, as, as things unfold, um, you know, it, it's very meticulously put together. There's lots of technical issues, and I, you know, I'm the first to ac acknowledge that. Having said that, I'm happy with what I've produced. Um, you know, it's costly every hour of editing going forward to improve this. It's, it's, it's a massive expense. I don't have the funds, uh, frankly. Um, I've been offered to upgrade it at 500000 to make it internationally compliant. I don't have that funds. What I have here, I'm happy with. I've done what I set out to do. Um, and yeah, it's not perfect, but I think it tells a good story. And that was my objective. Um, and I think it does represent other untold stories. But I, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll be happy for you guys to give me feedback on that. Thank you very much. ...in opposing the oppressive system of apartheid. There's a way to uprisings obviously quickly um, uh, uh, made its way back down to Cape Town. In June 16, Soweto spread to Cape Town. There was an enormous obstacle. So my idea was that we should march to the place that really mattered. Uh, the response was quite a shock. Uh, we, we saw this huge contingent of, of riot police with batons and obviously shooting tear gas and so on. The demonstrators fled in all directions to escape the violence of the security police. Ten of us got arrested. And we were all, all kids and we were sitting like this around these. And I, I remember this very... Uh, all of us were sitting here and Dala was sitting there. 